Okay, let us begin. <coughs> uh, <coughs> last time uh, we discussed solution to quantum problem of spin chain and Gaden model. And uh, the Hamiltonian of Gaden model was written like like this. Where is classical R matrix it was just permutation operator divided by spectral parameter. Uh, today I would like to to begin with explanation uh, how this formula is related to its classical analog because at classical level Ganen models are also widely, widely known. Uh, Gaden model at classical level. I will just briefly describe the Gaden model at classical level and then show how it should be quantized in order to obtain what is given here. Uh, Let us write down the Lux matrix. The Lux matrix of the Gaden model is just the most natural one uh, from the point of view of, of uh, dependence on spectral parameter. It's just a multipole uh, matrix valid function. Plus some V where V is a constant matrix, and this SA are dynamical variables. So this SA are matrices, and uh, all matrix elements, I and J runs from 1 to N large, and A goes from 1 to N small. So this is dynamical variables, this is some constant matrix, and this is the most <coughs> Uh, the most natural function, rational function, uh, uh, which has poles, simple poles at these points. Um, uh, let us compute Hamiltonians. So the, the Hamiltonians are generated by uh, so the generation function of Hamiltonians, generating function of Hamiltonians is just trace of second power of this L and it consists of several terms. First we have a sum uh, of terms which have, so if you uh, compute the square of this matrix and then put the trace, uh, then you have uh, several types of terms. Uh, the first type uh, contains Second order poles. Um, the second type it goes from one to n. Uh, the second type ter terms contains first order poles, and you will also have some constant term, which is just, in fact. Uh, trace of squared matrix V. And uh, we have our Poisson structure here is a direct sum of Poisson structures inside each SA. So that we have SA, IJ, SB, KL is equal to delta AD, SA, IL delta kj minus inverse. And uh, it means, so you, you have, a, in fact, where we're dealing with Riemann sphere, and we have a set of points, marked points on this sphere, z1 and so on up to zn. And we have, uh, 
and we assign to each point some degrees of freedom, S1, S2, and so on. And uh, they have a Poisson bracket, non-trivial Poisson bracket inside each point separately. <clears throat> so the later means that these expressions standing here are Casimir functions. These are Casimir functions. So that they do, do not provide any non-trivial dynamics and they are not interesting. And this, this is a constant. And the non-trivial uh, uh, Hamiltonians are the coefficients standing here. These are classical Gaudin Hamiltonians. And we may write uh, we may write them explicitly. Let us do it. I think we don't need Okay, let, let me write here. So H A uh, is a sum of uh, B which is not equal to A <coughs> from one to N small, where N small is a number of points or a number of S uh, matrix S variables. And here we have trace S A S B divided by Z A minus Z B. Uh, plus trace of S A with Z. This is what we have. And of course, you may write down equations of motion. And uh, in fact, uh, these equations of motion are represented, of course, in the lax form. Let me just write the answer. Or maybe, OK, let, let me write it, yes. Uh, so we have a set of Hamiltonians, and we uh, uh, we may consider dynamics generated by any of them. For and we associate with this H A Hamiltonian uh, time variable T A. Uh, then the dynamics takes the form of uh, T S. B, uh, D, T, A is equal to, maybe I will put the wrong sign, I'm, I'm not sure in fact, but this is easy to, to verify. So, uh, and if this is if A is not equal to B. And if you consider dynamics of S, B, with S, A with respect to the same variable A, then uh, it, will gives you, it will give you uh, the sum over C not equal to A, S, C, S, A divided by Zc minus Za. So these are equations of motion. And these equations of motion are represented uh, in the lax form as follows. We have some, we have that uh, L of Z and its dynamics with respect to this, uh, to this Hamiltonian HA is given by commutator, and here we put some matrix M A of Z, where M A is in fact quite simple. It's plus minus maybe minus S A divided by Z minus Z A. So ev everything in this model is clear, and what I want to do is just to show that uh, the quantum Hamiltonian, which we considered previously, is naturally obtained from this classical consideration. For this purpose, <coughs> we need to consider uh, 
the naive quantization which we used previously. Let me show how, let me recall you how we did it. Uh, so we considered uh, the Hilbert space in this quantum model, which was a tensor product of Cn, and the number of these vector spaces is n, small, where it coincides with the number of these matrices S. And uh, uh, the quantization means that uh, when considering, say, S i a b, we define an operator uh, which acts as uh, S one on all the components except the eth one, and at the eth component it acts by e b a. This is at eth place. Yes, this is this was our. Uh, quantization in the fundamental representation. Or maybe I should put also h, uh, h bar here. Um, okay, well, let us now <coughs> uh, look uh, at the expression for the Hamiltonian. So we are looking at this expression and uh, we want to quantize it using this rule. So what should we write? We should write here. So first of all, let us write it a little more explicitly. I mean, uh, may maybe I change indices. I will put here <coughs> I, uh, H I not equal to J. Uh, trace of uh, S i S j divided by the i minus the j uh, plus trace of S i uh, and v. And now let me write it more explicitly. Uh, so this sum goes from 1 to n small. And we have also uh, if we write down this trace, then, then what is it? It is a b b a, yes, uh, divided by z i minus z j, and this sum goes from one to to n large, because this is the size of a matrix. And the same is here. So we have here also the sum over a b from one to n large. S i a b v and so let us let us think that this v is a diagonal matrix. So we put here just S a a uh, v v a. So v is a in fact it doesn't matter. Uh, so uh, it, it was not so it. It is, it is without head. And now, <clears throat> now the quantization means that we put heads everywhere. So then what we have? If we put heads, uh, then we have uh, the same sums. And here we should put E, uh, B, A, I, E, a, B, J divided by, so this is a, uh, this means uh, the place where E acts, the, the number of component, tensor component where, uh, where, this mat, uh, where this generator acts. And here we have also a sum from one to N. Uh, e A A 
i v a. This is it. And of course, we can sum up again over a and b. And this provides, uh, this provides the sum over a not equal, uh, I'm sorry, I should put here i, and I should write here like j not equal to i. Uh, this is h i, and this is a sum over j which is not equal to i. Uh, and the same is here, and the same is here. So this is equal to just Pij divided by Zi minus Zj, yes, because this is just the permutation operator acting in the eth and gth components uh, by our definition, which we discussed many times. Uh, and here we have just uh, here we have just what we have. So it's a it's a matrix. This is a matrix V, yes, because we are summing up this V A with a diagonal uh, with basis matrices E E A A. So we have this matrix V in eth component, yes. So it is just V standing in each component. And this is exactly what we, what, we, what we have here. So this quantization, or maybe I should also put some Planck constants somewhere here. Uh, maybe here I should put h squared and here h, but uh, it doesn't matter in fact, uh, because here I didn't put Planck constants. So, <clears throat> uh, I just want to, to mention that uh, the expressions uh, which we obtained for these Gaudin quantum Gaudin Hamiltonians are very natural from the point of view of classical integrable systems. And uh, uh, the next thing I mentioned previously also at quantum level is that you may you may also consider the so-called knizhnik zamolodzik equations. So we, what we studied uh, uh, when discussed beta and Zs, we discussed the Schrodinger equation. Some psi. This was Schrodinger equation. And now, uh, let, us also, let us also consider the so-called knizhnik zmolodzik equations. This set of equations can be defined as follows. Uh, so if, you, if we have a set of Gaudin Hamiltonians, then <coughs> uh, then knizhnik zamolodzik equations, let us write it maybe, yes, just like this. Um, are defined as a set of equations and small equations. So the number of equations is exactly uh, is equal to uh, the, the number of uh, these variables z, so the number to, to the number of marked points. <coughs> we can also um, it is, uh, it is possible to prove that uh, the set of these equations is compatible. 
compatible equations. Equations. And in this sense, <coughs> they indeed may have a common solution. In order to show it, we need to, <coughs> to calculate. So let us write this equation like in this form. Nabla psi, where this is what is called the knizhnik zemalochikov connection. And this Nabla is equal to partial derivative with respect to the tie minus Gaden Hamiltonian. So if we compute a commutator of uh, two such connections, uh, then what we have? Uh, we have, of course, uh, so let us write it. The Gaden Hamiltonians commute with each other. So the commutator of, of two of these expressions uh, uh, is cancelled out. And what we have here is just uh, dzjhi minus dzi hj. So is this equal to zero? Uh, in fact, it is uh, for the following reason. Because if you look at this, uh, let us look at this hi more attentively, what it is. Uh, it consists of a sum of our matrices, and one of its index uh, is index i. So it is just ri1 plus ri2 plus and so on, uh, except the one where this, this index coincides with ri. So this is this sum. And uh, what is hj? Let us also write it. This is g1, g2, and so on, up to j, um, j minus 1 plus rj, j plus 1, and so on. So when we compute uh, uh, the action of derivative of dzj to this Hamiltonian, uh, what we have? We have the only term which is non-trivial, uh, which has non-trivial derivative, is the one which contains index j. Yes. So uh, so here we have uh, dzj r uh, uh, i j and here we have for the same reason d z i r g i so this this is the answer and uh, 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 you see here we have r i j and here we have r g i and our matrix is q symmetric so that this expression, this expression is equal to uh, R i j uh, acted by the sum of d z i plus d z j. And since it's again, since it's skew symmetric, uh, we are acting by the sum of derivatives on the expression which depends on the difference of spectral parameters, and this is why it is zero. So that the Nizhnik zemalochik of connections commute with each other. Uh, and uh, this allows us to, uh, to, write down, to write down this set of equations. And these are compatible equations. And this, this is why they have a common solution. And what does it mean from the point of view of classical mechanics? So uh, 
you see <coughs> the quantum Hadden, quantum Gaden uh, model uh, uh, is a set of Schrodinger equations. And uh, uh, at classical level, we have classical integrable system. And if we look at knizhnik zamolochikov equations, uh, we see that this is a set of non-stationary Schrodinger equation. Let us write it like non-stationary non Schrodinger equations. And non-stationary Schrodinger equations corresponding to, uh, some, uh, to something non-stationary at classical level. And uh, uh, at, uh, in classical mechanics, if you have some uh, Hamiltonian dependent on times, it is called non-autonomous. Uh, non-autonomous. Non-autonomous. No mechanics. Uh, what does it mean, non-autonomous mechanics? It means that we now replace, I, I will not uh, write it again, but you may do it. Uh, 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 just I, I will change this T to Z. So this non-autonomous version means that now we consider these points, these marked points on the sphere, like time variables. And we put them here and consider dynamics, classical mechanics, with respect to these times. So this is a non-autonomous generalization of Gaden model. And it is widely known, in fact, system. It was studied many years ago, uh, about 100 years ago, and it is called Schlesinger system. Sch Schlesinger system, and it is, uh, uh, it is closely related to the so-called monodromic preserving equations. And in some particular cases, this Schrodinger system is reduced to to Penleve equations, and if you know pen, uh, classification by Penleve of uh, special equations, which have some some special very nice properties, uh, they they all arising from from considering Schrodinger equations, Schrodinger systems. Uh, okay, so now let us fix it. Uh, uh, that, the uh, that the quantization of Gaden model is very natural, and it is given uh, by what we have already considered, and even more, we, we, uh, we explained how it can be solved by means of uh, Bittansatz method. And if we consider the knizhnik zamolochikov equations, then these equations can be considered as non-stationary Schrodinger equations, and at classical levels, it means non-autonomous mechanics, non-autonomous generalization of integrable systems. This, so uh, these Schlesinger system as, uh, uh, systems are not integrable, I should say. Uh, because instead of Lux equation, uh, so this, is, this equation holds true for Gaden models. And for Schlesinger systems, we have another equation. We have a set of equations uh, which can be written as D so it's a kind of zero coverage equation you see we have additional additional term in the left hand side this is a Lux equation, and this is just some zero coverage equation. It guarantees uh, that the monodromy uh, around mark points 
the monodromy of solutions around marked points is preserved. This is why it is also called uh, monodromy preserved equations. Uh, but we are, we are not going uh, to, to, to discuss this topic in detail. I, this is just to mention. But uh, at quantum level, uh, uh, the set of Knizhnik Zmolochik equations is interesting for our purposes because they are closely related to many body, quantum many-body integrable systems. Next time, we will discuss uh, quantum many-body integrable systems in detail. And today, I just want to show you <coughs> uh, how, they can, how they naturally appear from, this, uh, from consideration of equations like knizhnik uh, But before proceeding to, uh, to discuss relation to many body problems, let me also, uh, let me also show you what is the so-called quantum of difference knizhnik zamolochikov equation. For this purpose, we should uh, okay, maybe I will free all the black button. Let us now discuss what is called Q KZ, where Q means quantum or what is the same as difference, difference knizhnik zamolochikov equations. Um, let me recall that we, <coughs> so, um, when we considered uh, the spin chain, spin chain, We obtained explicit expressions for its Hamiltonians uh, by considering uh, uh, expansion of transfer matrix in the following form. It was, it's just to recall, that it was trace of G, where G was a twist matrix. And we also had the sum. And we found explicit expressions uh, for, this, uh, for these Hamiltonians. Uh, let me just write them briefly. So e everywhere our matrix depends on the difference of uh, spectral parameters, which numbers corresponds to the numbers of tensor components. For example, this R i i minus one depends on z i minus z i minus one, and so on. Uh, then we put g i, and then we we had R i n, and so on up to R i plus one. This this was expression. This was explicit expression for uh, spin chain Hamiltonians. And what we are going to write down now is, is uh, some, somewhat similar to, to, to these expressions. Namely, <coughs> the, uh, so le let, us, uh, let us introduce the uh, shift operators, which act to some function of variables, uh, of variables z not x, but it's better to put z, uh, in the following way. It just shifts the eth uh, variable by h eta. And the rest are not affected. Uh, so, in fact, we may write it just like uh, 
like this, like exponent of differential operator. Uh, then <coughs> a set of quantum Knizhnik's Malogic equations. So uh, here we put the word quantum. What, what does it mean, quantum? Because even uh, an ordinary Knizhnik's Malogic equation is also some quantum problem. Uh, but that quantum problem was formulated in terms of classical R matrices. And this quantum problem will be formulated in terms of, of quantum R matrices. This is why it is called quantum. Um, <coughs> so the set of quantum Knizhnik Zmalochik equations is defined as follows. It, it is uh, just briefly, uh, shortly written like this. And this ki is an operator of the following form. Um, I, I minus one, z i minus z i minus one plus e to h and so on up to r i one. Um, H Z I minus Z uh, Z one plus e to H and here I put G I and it is multiplied also by our matrices which are not shifted and we put here inverse our matrices. So So what we can see, uh, suppose our R matrix is, uh, uh, is unitary. Uh, the R matrix is unitary when you have Rij multiplied by Rji is equal to one. Then you may just uh, say that this is Rin and this is Ri up i plus one. And this is just exactly the same what is written here, except the one thing, except these shifts, these additional shifts, which are standing here. So this, this operator is, is, is very close to, uh, to quantum Hamiltonian of generalized spin chain, uh, except, except these shifts. And, but the shifts are important, of course. Uh, let us maybe show also uh, that this set of equations is again compatible, compatible equations. Previously, when we considered uh, uh, an ordinary Knizhnik Zmalochik of connections, the commutativity of these connections uh, was based on the commutativity of uh, quantum Gaden Hamiltonians. And uh, the commutativity of quantum Gaden Hamiltonians in their turn uh, was based on the classical Young Baxter equation because uh, Gaden Hamiltonians are, are just kind of sums, sums of of our matrices, yes, and the commutativity of them is, a, is some set of commutators of our matrices. And if you look attentively, you, you will see that the commutativity of these Hamiltonians is just equivalent to the classical young baxter equation. And what I want to say is, is that the compatibility of this set of equations is equivalent to quantum young baxter equation. Uh, so let m maybe I, w I will not do it in the general case. Uh, it, it's not uh, very much difficult, but it, it, some, uh, it's not easy to write it on the blackboard. So, so it's a quite long formula. Uh, 
Mm. Uh, so let me show you just uh, why it is true for, uh, in some simple case. And uh, in the general case, you may verify it or just look to the paper by Frankel and Rishitikin where they constructed this set of equations. Um, okay, uh, so let me show you. So what, what means the compatibility? Compatibility, uh, 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 how it can be written here? Let us act, let us act on this equation by Tj from both sides. So we write like Tj, Ti uh, is equal to Ti, K, I, H, Psi. Uh, and this is a, a shift operator, yes? This is a difference operator. So it acts on both, on uh, T, yes, thanks, TJ, yes. Uh, it acts on both, on, on this expression and on this Psi. So let us write it like, uh, the action of uh, this t only on k, and then also action on psi. Yes. So it's just the same uh, as if we, uh, so w when we write these brackets, we mean, in fact, the conjugation. So this is what, what, what we did. We just in inserted here, uh, an identity operator, Tj minus uh, uh, Tj and inverse of Tj. Uh, uh, okay. And uh, if, if we do it in a, yes, and uh, what we have here then, Tj psi uh, is of course equal to uh, <coughs> Kj. <coughs> and of course, of course, we can do it in, in different order. So we, we may just uh, consider T i, T j acting on psi, and they are equal to each other. And we just obtain the same expression where you just change uh, i to j. And uh, as a result, as a result, compatibility condition uh, takes the following form. Uh, let, us, let us write it somewhere here. Uh, compatibility condition. Okay, let me write it here. Compatibility condition is just T, Tj, Ki, Kj is equal to the same with I and J uh, interchanged. So you may just, uh, of course, uh, uh, put explicitly all these formulas over there and, uh, and, and then look h how the left-hand side is transformed to right-hand side with the help of uh, uh, Jan Baxter equation because you need to move some R matrices um, to the left or to the right. <coughs> but maybe let, let us show just a, uh, just a simplest example. Mm, the simplest example is, uh, 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 so let, let us consider n equals, n equals 3. Uh, then we have three equations, and let us have a look uh, at them more attentively. Uh, what is k1? k1 of h. Uh, so you see, 
when uh, we put i is equal to 1, uh, then there is no these uh, are matrices in this product, yes, because they go from i i minus 1 to i 1. So uh, uh, for k1, we have a product uh, of, of inverse R matrices only. We have R31 inverse, yes. Uh, uh, no, we, we have also, of course, this twist matrix. Let us write it. Twist matrix. Uh, twist matrix is uh, G1. And then R31 inverse, R21 inverse. Uh, then K2. And in the short notations, I should uh, uh, mark somehow if our matrix is shifted. So uh, with, shift, with this shift of argument. And let me just call it R plus. So if I write, so if I write R12, uh, I mean R12 of Z1 minus Z2. And if I write R plus 12, I mean R12 of Z1 minus Z2 plus eta H. This is just the definition of plus. So then <coughs> uh, uh, substitute I equal uh, equals 2, uh, then we have R21, and this R21 goes with plus. Yes, this, this is, if we put I equals uh, 2, then we have this, exactly this R matrix. Then we have also uh, twist matrix in the second component, and we also have R32 inverse. And finally, for K3 of H, uh, we have no inverse R matrices, but we have product of two R matrices with shift arguments. Uh, when I is equal to 3, then we have R3, 2, uh, and R3, 1 with shifted arguments. And also this twist matrix in the third component. So this is a set of these operators in this uh, simplest case. Uh, okay, and. Uh, um, let, let us verify this uh, compatibility of this of these operators. Just we can consider any two of them and and write down uh, and write down this equation, this compatibility condition, compatibility condition. For example, we may take K2 and K1. This is what is, uh, is easily done. Let us write it like, like, we have, like we have over there. K2 should be equal to, should be equal, but we are verifying if it is true or not. K1, yes, yes. Okay, so uh, left hand side. We are looking at left hand side, what we have here. So we are acting by T2 on K1. Uh, when acting by T2 on K1, you see, uh, the uh, Z2, or th this argument Z2 standing here, is shifted. And this is the only, the only thing which is shifted under this action. 
So as a result, <coughs> uh, as a result, we obtain uh, G one R R three one in inverse, and this uh, two one should be plus inverse. Yes. Now the plus appeared from the action of this uh, shift operator. Uh, then we should multiply it by K2. And so we just put it here. Uh, and our K2 is exactly R21 plus um, G2 and then R32 inverse. <coughs> yes? Yes, that's true. This is a left hand side. Uh, and maybe we can. Uh, we can slightly, slightly simplify it from the very beginning because these R matrices are cancelled out, R plus to one with its inverse. And you see we can also, after the cancellation of these two R matrices, we can, uh, we can move this G2 to the left because here we have R3, one. This is an operator which is non-trivial in the third and the first components only. And this sits in the second component. This is why we can uh, move it to the left. So we have G1, G2, uh, three, R3, one inverse, and R3, two inverse. This is the left hand side. <coughs> And let us now also write the right hand side. So the right hand side is as follows. Uh, so we act by T1 on K2. Uh, this is K2 and we act by T1. You see this one is standing on the second position. So when we act by T, uh, uh, by T1, this plus uh, is removed. So we had here uh, the argument here is Z2 minus Z1 plus uh, plus E to H. And when we act on this K2 by T1, this Z1 is shifted exactly by this uh, expression and this expression is cancelled out. So uh, uh, what we should write here is just uh, maybe it's better to write uh, first T1, K2. Just it may be uh, better to write it separately. It is just R21 without plus G, G2 and R, R3, 2 inverse. Yes, and now uh, we should multiply it. Uh, now we, we write the right hand side, and it is equal to the product of this expression uh, and this K1. Uh, and the K1 is what we have here. It is equal to G1 multiplied by. R three one inverse R two one inverse. And again we can see uh, that this G one can be moved to the left because here we have uh, an operator R three two which acts in the second and the third component and this one sits in the first one component. So it is equal to uh, It is equal to uh, R21 G2 G1 and then R32 inverse R31 inverse and R21 inverse. 
uh, finally, uh, you see that uh, this is what I explained before. The, the twist matrix is not just a, uh, you cannot put it uh, just by your wish. Uh, you may put it uh, uh, only if uh, your R matrix has the corresponding symmetry. So if you, uh, if you have um, if you have in fact solution of RLL relation given by constant given by some constant matrix this is a definition of twist matrix so if we have <coughs> if we have this expression it means in fact that we can uh, move this G when we have product of G2 and G1 multiplied by this R matrix, then we may move them to the left. And this, this allows us to write finally the following answer and now we uh, were left uh, with these two expressions and we need to compare just these two products of our matrices because the twist matrix is tending to the left both of them and so uh, the only thing we need to verify if if this product is equal to this product uh, so how we can do it uh, we may probably multiply by R21 and worse, both, uh, both expressions, and look, and look what we have. Let us now consider inverse of both sides. If we can see the inverse of both sides of these expressions, uh, then we get uh, so the same what is written here, but in uh, in different order. So we should put R uh, from the left. We have R first R three two, then R three one, and then R two one, and it should be equal. And we are verifying if it is to R21, uh, R31, and R32. Is it true or not? Uh, we should change 3 to 1. Then we have R12, R13, R23 is equal to R23, R13, R12. So this is the Baxter equation. And, and this, is, this was the simplest case. Uh, but in the general case, you just uh, need to look more attentively on just uh, this, the structure of, uh, of blocks of products of our matrices. And you need just to to see how, how they can be moved to the left or to the right using this uh, Jan Baxter equation. The Jan Baxter equation is, is, uh, is the rule how you may move our matrices to the left or to the right. Okay, so <coughs> uh, let us fix uh, this also important set of equations. Uh, it is important uh, uh, for the following reason because they uh, I told you that the knizhnik zmolodchikov equation uh, equations are related to quantum kolodzhar moser system. Uh, and this uh, quantum knizhnik zmolodchikov equations, or difference uh, knizhnik zmolodchikov equations, are related to uh, uh, difference commuting operators, which are Rosinar's operators or um, uh, in trigonometric case, they are also known as McDonald operators. So this is what, what appears from, from 
uh, from consideration of these equations. And we will discuss it later. But now I will, <coughs> I will explain you how in, order, in ordinary Knizhnik zemologic equations are related to, uh, to quantum collodger mosler system. Because previously, th this is what we begin with this course when, when we first discussed some classical mechanics of uh, classical mechanics of integrable systems. Uh, I mentioned uh, an important example of integrable many body system, which is Kaloger Moser model. And now we are close to to discuss its, its quantum analog. Uh, just a second. And what I'm, in fact, what I'm going to do, so the relation will be to Kolodzero Moser model which I denote like CM. Uh, and the Hamiltonian, <coughs> the Hamiltonian is as follows. Maybe let me write, instead of that, I will write here, uh, I will write here variables x. dx i squared from 1 to n uh, minus so at the level of classical mechanics we saw we saw this model uh, and this model was just given by by the same Hamiltonian, maybe I should, I may put, of course, here one, one half. So at classical level, we wrote like this, from one to n, and then minus one half also. This was the classical kolodzer uh, system, which is integrable, Liouville integrable, and even more, uh, one can construct explicit solutions using some uh, some simple uh, some simple formula. And at quantum level, this is a just direct quantization, uh, just direct quantization. And we're going to to explain now how this uh, set of Knizhnik zemologic equations is uh, related to uh, to this quantum many-body problem. Uh, let us write it again, uh, KZ equations, KZ equations, uh, well, let us write them as follows. Uh, we denote solution by, uh, by vector phi. And write explicitly here uh, the set of. Th th this is what I'm writing here is in fact uh, an expression for the Gaden Hamiltonian, quantum Gaden Hamiltonian plus G i acting on phi. This is exactly what we just considered, but we denote it uh, phi by psi and denote it uh, xi by z. No more difference. <coughs> and j, j is some diagonal matrix. Yes, j was v in our previous notations. So we. Let us use this notation for the twist. Uh, and so what we are going to do? <coughs> uh, 
uh, first of all, first of all, uh, and this this can be called the Gaden Hamiltonian, yes. And uh, the Gaden Hamiltonians commute with each other. This is what we know. But uh, it is also important for us that they commute with one more operator. Uh, this operator MA, um, which is equal to E A uh, A, the sum of I from 1 to M. So what is, what is the operator MA? It, it, this is an operator which, uh, uh, which measures uh, the number of spins uh, with a certain component. For example, uh, for example, if we have uh, if our if we have n equals two situation, so the JL two uh, model, uh, then there are only two of these operators. So then we have a pair of these operators m m one, which is e uh, one one in the first component, e one one in the second component, and so on. Uh, and the second operator, which is E22 in the first component, E22 in the second component, and so on, E22 in the nth component. And so uh, uh, this, these operators measures the number of spins up or down uh, in the simplest case. And in the general case, uh, they just measure uh, the number of spins with a certain component, uh, with a component A. Uh, <coughs> and it, it is just important for us that this MA commutes with Gaudin Hamiltonians. It's, uh, it's just an exercise. I, I won't do it now, but you may verify that uh, if you consider a commutator, then it appears to be zero. And uh, since it is true, then uh, we, may, uh, we may look for the joint sp uh, spectral problem, uh, joint for, for both operators. So we, we are looking for HI, um, for example, HI phi. If we discussed the Gaudin model, uh, then, we may, then we could put <coughs> then we could consider the Schrodinger equation together with uh, together with this equation. So this is just what I what I just previously told you that this is exactly uh, the number of spins up or down. <coughs> and let us fix this MA since it commutes with H A H I. <coughs> we may fix somehow uh, a set of, in fact, our Gilbert space, uh, uh, let me just write it, that the Gilbert space, our Gilbert space is Cn in the tensor power of n small, and it can be, in fact, presented, represented like a direct sum over all possible values of all this m n, m a. With some some components where M A are fixed. So the, the, we have just uh, our our, uh, our Gilbert space consists of sectors where uh, uh, a certain number of spins are up or down, and this is what we know from solution by beta and Zatz method, because even when we solve by beta and Zatz method, we we fix number of, spin, of spins up and down <coughs> and because uh, the number of turned spins is exactly the number uh, is exactly the number of beta, beta, beta roots so in fact this is what we already used I just uh, uh, pay attention that it can be formulated in the general case um, okay let so let us assume that it, this ma is fixed somehow. 
Now, what can we do? <coughs> what should we do next? Um, so our purpose is to relate this problem to this quantum problem. In order to do it, <coughs> we just look at this equation and compute h squared dx i squared. So we have the first order operator, but then we uh, act again by one more time by dx i on both sides. And uh, after that, we will sum up uh, in order to, to obtain this the Laplace n, which is, which is standing here. And, and look what, what we have. So uh, let us compute. Uh, uh, it is equal to, you see, what we have. Uh, first, it acts uh, on this bracket. Uh, when it acts on this bracket, uh, I, I mean the second derivation, uh, then it provides uh, minus uh, minus h, so it's also multiplied by h. It's not only derivative, but uh, additional derivative multiplied by h. Yes, we're, we're acting on this equation from both sides by this operator. <coughs> then we have uh, the following term, which comes from derivation of this bracket. And here we have uh, xi minus xj squared. It's because we act to this xi. And this is why we also have minus here. Uh, this sum is over j, j, j is not equal to i. Uh, and next, next, uh, we have we have this bracket and uh, uh, this operator acts not on the bracket but on this phi, yes? So h gives i phi. And this, uh, instead of this, uh, instead of this, uh, uh, I won't just uh, uh, rewrite it, but you may do it uh, uh, as you wish. I just put, instead of this expression, I will put it, this right-hand side again. And just let us write it again, the same expression. <coughs> it should be like new over say uh, L is not equal to I, P I L divided by Z, uh, X I minus X L uh, plus J I. So this is what we have from the right hand side. Uh, and we can simplify this expression. <coughs> So we have not a lot of time, but let me <coughs> uh, uh, let me okay. Let us let us write let us write some some more simplifications, and then I show you the main idea. So now <coughs> uh, we have this term first. Uh, let us write it. This first one. Uh, then we also have uh, g squared, g i squared. Uh, then we also have mixed terms when j i 
is multiplied by this sum, or this sum is multiplied by j i from the other, uh, from the other uh, uh, side. So j i is multiplied, uh, uh, multiplies the sum from both sides, one time from left and another time from the right. So let me write it. J is not equal to i. Nu pij xi minus xj multiplied by uh, ji here. So we have this term also. Uh, yes, it comes from this j multiplied by sum or sum multiplied by j. And finally, we have a double sum, <coughs> this multiplied by this. Uh, uh, and we uh, let us also let us also consider uh, we we just subdivide the double sum will be subdivided in, uh, in, into two sums. The first one when equals uh, so uh, let me just write it like j is not equal to i and l is not equal to i. Yes. And we subdivide it to the two cases when L is, is equal to J and L is not equal to J. When L is equal to J, we are left, in fact, with the, with the following simple expression, PIJ squared here. Because if J is equal to L, we have PIJ squared. And this is just identity operator, yes, because it's a permutation. And when uh, L is not equal to J, we have a du some double sum over L not equal to J and L, J are not equal to I. Uh, P, I, J, P, I, L <coughs> divided by X, I minus X, J, X, I minus X, L. And all this, all this should be should be multiplied by phi. So this is this is a this is what we have. <coughs> and now uh, the main thing. So this this can be a little more simplified, but it doesn't matter in fact uh, for, for for me now. Uh, what I want. <coughs> I want to uh, I want to consider not phi, but the scalar product of phi with some omega. And let me define define this omega uh, in the following way. So we we can see the kind of projection. This what is called the construction I'm telling you is called Matsuo uh, Chirinik projection. is projection. Projection means that we consider not uh, that some solution to Knizhnik's Malochik equations, but a certain component of these solutions. And this component is obtained by, uh, mm, by considering this scalar product of this phi multiplied by some co, uh, co vector omega. And this co vector omega has specific properties. Uh, we choose it in such a way, so we, we choose it in such a way that it is obtained by kind of symmetrization. Uh, so if you have, uh, if, if you have in your sector, uh, if, in, if, if we consider the total Hilbert space, we should just symmetrize overall basis elements. Uh, let me write it like J. Well, J is a basis vector in uh, in the dual J basis vectors basis vectors in dual Gilbert space uh, with fixed 
M1 and ML. So it's a it's a kind so it's a symmetrization overall basis elements, but in concrete sector, uh, with with concrete fixed this uh, values of the operator M. Um, but the later means that the action on this omega of any permutation operator is trivial. So it acts by one because it's a, it, it is obtained just by total symmetrization over all basis elements. And when you act by a permutation operator, you just permute some basis elements. And if you constructed a co-vector which is obtained by symmetrization, then the action is, of course, given by one. And this is the main idea, in fact. So if we just, now we are looking at this expression. Now we are looking at this expression. And we just uh, multiply it uh, from both sides by this omega. Everywhere from the left and everywhere from the right. And if you do it, then you just remove all permutation operators standing here. All permutation operators standing here uh, are just removed. And uh, <coughs> I maybe have no time. Yes, uh, we, we don't have uh, much time, but l let me just uh, show you the uh, main result. So if you look attentively at, at, at what you have from the left and, and from the right, then you will obtain the following thing. <coughs> uh, you will obtain from the, uh, from the left. You see from, e yes, and after that we also sum up over i because we want to, to obtain this Laplace operator. So we just multiply both sides by this omega, by a special covector with these symmetric properties, and then sum up overall uh, uh, values of index i. Uh, <coughs> uh, then from the left-hand side, we have exactly this uh, exactly these operators which we want to have and of course we uh, we just because uh, which is denoted by psi and this is a constant vector so uh, this expression is equal to the action of of the z operator to, to, to psi uh, and from the right hand side we'll have uh, i is not equal to j mu squared minus nu h divided by xi minus xj multiplied by the same psi. This psi is just a scalar product. Uh, and plus also plus some, something special. Let me show you what uh, th this special term uh, comes from this j i squared. Uh, it is it is omega g i squared phi. This is what we have, and uh, here we cannot move this omega to the to the right. Yes, because this is some non-trivial operator, and we should explain how it acts. But in fact, it is not. Uh, it, it's yes, and, uh, it's not. Uh, it's not a hard task because uh, we may write it more explicitly. Let us write. This is a sum two n small. Uh, this is a, uh, because it's a number of particles. And uh, let us write it. Uh, this G i is in fact. A matrix, yes. So we, we may write it like uh, G A A goes from one to n. <coughs> so for this reason, we <coughs> we write it from uh, uh, by the sum from a, uh, from A equals to one to n large. Uh, and here we have 
omega, and here we have E A A I G A squared, and here phi. And what we see, now we change the summation, and if we change the summation, we see that what we have here <coughs> is exactly this operator M, which we had previously. So if we unify this index I with, with this one, then what is written here is nothing more but the sum of A uh, from 1 to enlarge. Uh, and here we have omega M A G A squared, and here phi. And this M A, we know that this M A acts on phi on any solution. Uh, as any solution is uh, is also a eigenvector for this M A. This is what we discussed previously. So, and uh, its eigenvalue is equal to some M A, some number of spins up or down. And uh, this is why it is equal finally to just let me write the final answer. It is just equal to psi uh, multiplied by this sum uh, from 1 to uh, n large m a j a squared. And you see, <coughs> we have a kinetic term here. We have a potential term here uh, for this for this Hamiltonian, for this quantum Hamiltonian. And what is standing here? Uh, here we have psi multiplied by some number. So this number is in fact solution of eigenvalue problem. I mean it's a spectrum. So this expression is an energy. <coughs> so what this is this is the way uh, how you may obtain uh, many body systems from knizhnik zamolodzik equations. You see, our logic was quite tricky. We uh, we considered uh, spin chains and Gaudin models. Uh, then, at the level of Gaudin models, we said that let us uh, let us consider not. Gaudin models, but knizhnik zamolodzik equations, which are non-stationary versions to Gaudin models. And we wrote the set of equations, and we, we verified that this set of equations is compatible. Then uh, we use these equations. We uh, calculate the second-order derivative, uh, and then considered a special projection, projection to, 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 to some symmetric vector, to vector which has some special, very special, uh, very symmetric properties given here. Uh, and we considered uh, the projection towards this concrete direction. And uh, uh, we called uh, this color product of solution to knizhnik zmolodzik equations with this omega by psi, this psi is just some function. Yes, it stands, it, this is what is standing here, for example. And finally, it's also, of course, uh, is, uh, this is equal to E psi, where E is this expression, yes? So, uh, and as a result, we obtained uh, a Schrodinger equation uh, for many body system for quantum many body system of collagen type so uh, this uh, this is the way how you may relate uh, solutions to knizhnik zamolodzik equations with solutions to quantum many body problems and next time we will discuss just uh, quantum many pro many body problems separately without reference to to knizhnik zamolodzik equations and we will discuss some uh, uh, at least some may be simple, but also important class of solutions given by symmetric polynomials and so on. Okay, this is all for today.